So yeah, let's talk a little bit about you know the family business experience you got, Dan. Yeah, long. <laughs> like when I hear that, like the amount of thoughts that pop at? into my head, it's just yeah, it's crazy. I, I like if you. So I'll just start with like what the business was. And yeah. um, so we we're an audio visual technology company. So we were going in, you know, we were in New England. We were the largest audio visual integrator in the area. So Yale, Harvard, all the schools, we were doing all their classrooms, all their, co you know, video oh, okay. conferencing, yep. all the video walls in the classrooms, all the interactive technologies, um, all the digital signage, content, content management systems. Um, oh you know that kind of stuff uh we're also doing like you know giant video walls for casinos and you know stadiums we did the boston wow. celtics practice facility so all of their like wow. game review rooms and all the screens and all that kind of stuff and there's a massive amount of different types of projects that we've done in our life because there's so many different use cases and applications sure. um my grandfather started that in 1946 he was a pr he was a prisoner of war in world war ii and then oh, wow. after he got out after like a year, um, he started like basically showing like like back in the day when there's like those early projectors, like the yeah. like the those things. He was like showing up at people's houses and just like showing movies at their <laughs> house. Um, and then it just evolved over a lot of years um, and, and kind of moved into like educational technology and then this kind of broader idea of audiovisual technology. Um, so that's kind of what we did. Um, fast forward to my world was you know, in high school, I would go in the summers um, and through a little bit of college, I would be there in the summers more just doing like, you know, if, if you're building a huge system, you basically have those huge racks, right? Mm -hmm. And there's tons of technology and then there's yep. a billion cables mm -hmm. and I would be in the back just kind of like doing like bitch work all day, just stripping wires like we would be making our own rca cables oh, you know what i mean like yeah. someone would hand me like 700 feet of cable i'd be there with like a soldering iron and like <laughs> yeah. cutting shit and just drinking energy drinks um <laughs> and at that time in my life we were like making jackass videos like in high school just kind of being crazy <laughs> dirt biking all? like yeah just all that kind of that was our life dirt biking paintball screwing around the woods making jackass videos a ah, ton of them amazing. a ton of them for years <laughs> um so i used to just love like you know going to work and being in the back with the guys like a bunch of marines like different people with all these different backgrounds and just drinking energy drinks all day and, and doing that kind of stuff <laughs> and then i evolved from that into uh going out on site and installing like hot schools in the summer climbing ladders putting up projectors um you know learning on the field with whoever was like i was reporting to and just kind of learning how to more of the trade of it, how to install stuff. I never became like a master by any means, but that was like the lead up. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then I went to college uh, at Keene State in New Hampshire. And when I came out of college, I had like during college just really done a ton of startup stuff because my mind was always very like creativity orientated. Um, back in the day, I don't know, it must have been like early teens. My, I remember my mom came in my room and she showed me how some kid made like a million dollars selling worms online. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, worms? Yeah. So, yeah, like selling worms. And I don't know if you remember, this is like old, there was a website called the Million Dollar Website. And what they did is they like sold a million pixels of ad space. And so like there was just this oh, one website yeah, I feel like and, I and the that. whole page was just a million ads and it, it, it kind of blew up viral because yep. I'm like, oh, what a genius. You just sold pixels for a dollar. Yep. Um, and so... Ever since that, my brain, again, was more in the creative realm. Um, I was also, like, lucky enough to grow up in a blessed family, and we had money. So I was always a customer of so many different types of brands. And I was I had been through so many phases as well. Like, I want to be a surfer. I want to be a rapper. I want to, like, be a Marine. Like, I remember I've been yeah. through so many phases in my life that were just, like, Every time I was in a new phase where I was, like, oh, I was getting into paintball. I was getting into this. I had the luxury of being able to shop for the doper brands in each category mm -hmm. and so i i kind of like built up this visual acuity for what's dope and what's not you know what i mean because you're kind of choosing from all the brands you're uh, you know living yeah. in the united states in a good situation yeah. um and somehow that whole kind of accumulation of going through phases trying to express who you are shopping for brands that are the tool to express who you are got me to love brands and branding mm -hmm. and i remember just sitting through super bowls and just like like man i could have made a better commercial like yeah. you know what i mean I, i'd rather watch this like my head was always thinking what would i rather see what would i rather um what would i rather have as a customer so anyway i went to uh i went to college in college 
we came up with some app ideas super early. Like, I don't know if you remember. How old are you again? Or are you guys? I'm 29. 29? Yep. Uh, 26. 26. Um, so probably a similar thing, but I remember we always had the issue of like, hey, do you have Microsoft Word on your computer? Or I don't have yeah. it on my computer. And yeah, it was, yeah. I don't remember the exact timeline, but I know for a fact that at that time, Google Docs wasn't, or whatever the name yeah. of it is, wasn't really a thing. Yeah. So um, I came up with this idea of doing paperdaddy.com and it was going to be, an online word processor, it could save, other people could jump in and edit, but then I was going to sell ad space on the side of, like, luxury, you know, yeah. hotel rooms in Vegas, like, you know, <laughs> buy this penthouse. And I remember, like, yeah. calling the Hard Rock Hotel and being like, oh, oh would you, you know what I mean? <laughs> and and then I was like, all right, we'll have widgets, too, so college kids could, like, follow sports and, like, see cool shit while they type. Um, so we just did that as an experiment. I had no idea about anything about launching a business. I was just building a product and, like, yeah, let's just do it. Yeah. Um, and then... Uh, we built like a website called everythingefficient.com, which was when the green buzz got big and everyone was buying like energy efficient, clean products, cleaning products, seventh generation, all that kind of stuff. Mm, yeah. And then um, I ended up uh, building that. And then again, not launching the business, like just getting reps in kind of like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm into this and I'm like, oh shit, you know what I mean? Am I going to run a bit? I'm still yeah. young. Um, and then the last thing I got involved with in college was um, a record label that we built. I was at school, some kids came by for like a party and they were showing the music and I was like, holy shit, like I'm a fan. Like, and I'm a huge hip hop fan and I got good taste and I know what's dope and not. And I'm like, mm. I wanna listen to this all day. I'm like, this is like in the category of like my enjoyment of 50 Cent or other top, top artists. So probably for like seven or eight years, um, I was doing the hip hop thing and we had some like really cool wins in that. And just fast forwarding back to kind of that evolution after I came out of school to go back to the family business, my brain was all racked up with just like big brands, big tech companies. How do you build the best brand? That kind of thing. Um, yeah. So the timing was good because when I got back into the business um, on a more official note versus like just working on install, I was yeah. able to just help start the roadmap for um, rebranding the company uh, and kind of upgrading the whole visual appearance. So mm. that's just a little snapshot of, mm -hmm. of kind of like, you know, before the business and, uh, and then, yeah, just jumped in and then it's like 10 years of story since. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Man. Yeah. That's a good recap. Yes. Yeah. Well, so you, that's... you talked about this company, you said has been around pretty much since what the, you said the forties, 1946. Yeah. Yeah. 46. Yeah. But yeah. it started with, uh, like a, crank yourself projector and now it's yeah. gotten into all this digital space right? right yep um you talked a lot about evolution what do you think has allowed you and your organization to stay relevant with the technology because something i see a lot with family businesses mm -hmm. is they get stuck in their own ways like this is the way to do it yeah this is the way it works it's always worked this way yep we don't want to adapt with the new technology. For sure. But from what I'm hearing, there's been a lot of evolution over the last 70 years yep. that have gotten you to this yeah. point where you're still at the forefront of the latest and greatest technology, which allows you to continue to work with bigger and bigger brands, yep. continue to build those relationships, and be at the forefront of your industry. So something I see a lot when that is the case is when the next generation comes in, they help push those ideas onto their elder. Yeah. And, but it still takes the elder to be open minded. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. To say, That's a big okay, one. let's explore this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that kind of what you've seen happen over the years and generations in your family business? Yeah. I mean, and just for context, so we sold it a year ago. So, like, okay. as of today, um, it's not something that we're running right now. Okay. We sold it literally a year ago, but yeah, going back to that. Congrats. So when I came, yeah, when, yeah, when I awesome. came back into the business, um, after college, I, you know, I kind of, I, I can't help, but think when I look at an industry, I'm really only interested in how do you become like the most, the number one brand in the industry. Like yeah. I'm not really interested in anything else. Mm -hmm. um, and in some industries, I don't think that way. Like if it's a clothing brand and I have some ideas in the future about clothing, I'm like, I don't need to be the number one clothing brand. I want to sure. build something dope. In this specific industry, especially in tech, I looked around at all of our competitors. I was like, this is all trash. Yeah. From a customer standpoint, not sure. from an infrastructure There's standpoint. There's opportunity to be the best here. 100%. In a customer um, standpoint, like the experience they're receiving? or Yeah, just like um, really poor marketing, really poor productizing, very old school like website, yeah. mm -hmm. old school way of communicating. Um, mm -hmm. And like just for context, when I came into the business, it was already like 350 employees. We had 
um, uh, a Massachusetts location. I don't know if we had a New, a New Jersey right when I first started. I think it, it was somewhere around there. And then we had Connecticut headquarters. Um, and when I came into the business, my dad knew I was creative and he knew I had skills with design and all that. So yeah. I didn't start off like running marketing. I just started off like as a media designer. I'm like, hey, let's just design better <laughs> brochures. Let's like make stuff look better. Um, and pretty like the cool part was he was very open minded to those ideas to answer your question, which was great. Um, at the same time, he wasn't going to take those ideas and run them and push them himself True. in a way because we have a lot of employees, a whole team, you got a bank, you have yeah. a pretty solid amount of politics when you're dealing with that many employees because there were also pockets of ownership that were distributed over time. Like, oh, this guy's a 5% partner and he's right. got his own little empire in the company and he's got reasons to not want me to go somewhere because that might be threatening to him. Yeah. So like in the beginning, it was simple. I'm like, oh, I'm just designing shit. But then we went through, I was like, look, we need to rebrand like 100%. Like this website, our, our logo, our tagline, how our services are organized. It's very complicated. There's too many words. It's very techy. Um, I don't know if you've, I'm sure you've been on websites where you like click on a menu and you see this massive list of just services and words and like yeah. this menu item looks like it means this one and how is this different than that yeah. and why there was very, there's not much meaning to the madness and the nature of our business is like we were representing 350 partners so like samsung sony lg all those top yeah. executives we were a major seller we were doing like 100 120 million in revenue a year mm. and we owned all the northeast and all those top accounts and, and we were the big dog in the northeast so they wanted to be in the game and when mm. our engineers and our salespeople are going out and selling like a two million dollar project and video walls all over yale this company wants to be spec'd versus this company wants to be spec'd and yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. just like a ton of you're dealing with GCs. There's there's a lot of operational kind of stuff going on. Um, I'm trying to think what I was trying to stitch together there, but basically a lot of complexity of operations. Um, and well, you were getting at like the uh, the lack of clarity behind like kind of yeah, it, it was all messy. And yeah, the reason it's messy is because there's so many manufacturers and so many products. And over time, everybody just kind of went with whatever the buzzwords of the industry was. And I was just trying to simplify. I'm like I'm like, like I get that a big part of our target market is IT guys and tech guys. I was like, but the nature of the business of what we're doing, I, I like to look at things like if I'm selling something to a company, I love to look at it through the lens of like, what's the best possible thing I can do for the CEO of that company? Right. Not the best thing I can just do for the tech team who thinks they have an initiative in some small yeah. micro little piece you, of their you life. You do the bigger picture and you want to make the actual business impacts. To That's more what, than what just I'm like excited about. That's yeah. I'm like, I'm not shutting down the obvious fact that you have a massive list of customers who have needs and we can solve right. them tomorrow and we want to get that business. But like if the IT guy is trying to get six video walls for the cheapest price possible. Mm -hmm. Sure, we might want to show up for that business, but if I meet the CEO, I might be able to pitch him on an idea for his lobby that's a combination of video walls and content and, yeah. a, and an idea that he because had never thought of before. The picture. Right. Exactly. So the brand, I was like, look, the brand can't only be interpreted by certain people, meaning um, if someone comes to our site who's an IT guy and he gets it completely, mm -hmm. but your your family member your dad comes and, and shows up he's like what the fuck does this mean you know yeah, like right. he doesn't come to my website and get inspired about what he can do with his business yeah. in layman's terms so my thing was like look before we go any further like let's just rebrand get a lot of layman's terms let's mm -hmm. really like simplify the categories of our business versus just have massive lists of like we do everything and we're scared yeah. to not say we do everything. Yeah. So we're just going to write every word possible. Right. So, I mean, a big rebrand is no small thing. So how yeah. do you, you don't just go walk into an office, throw it out on the table and say like, we're going to do this and expect right. that that to be yeah. like received. Right. Yeah. So how do you, what was that process like being yeah. able to come into the business and try and like, you understand this is what needs to happen, yeah. but help them understand that that's in the business's best interest when yep. they've been doing things this way. And yep. obviously the business For was sure. doing well. Yep. For right? sure. Mm -hmm. So why the, change? The, here's the yeah, good thing. Change? So, exactly. so one thing was, there was actually a lot of common agreement that the rebrand had to happen. Mm, okay. So that was easy. That's good. Then. 
The hard part is, what are we rebranding to? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, so that? we, so yeah. And I knew for a fact, like being my age with my history, like they knew who I was. They knew we were like, I got in trouble and we were like kind of crazy kids. And like, how am I going to perceive you as yeah. like, sure, Dan, you might be creative and have a bunch of ideas, but like you, could, you better prove yourself, which is good. Cause have I would, already graduated I would do point? the same. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I would do the same, right? If mm-hmm. someone's kid just came in, it's like, yeah cool idea but like prove yourself so i knew pretty quickly that the only way that we were going to get the job done right and that also includes not that i i couldn't have got the job done right at that age without some kind of agency help sure so the first thing we did was just shop out agencies to come in and pitch all of us on Mm -hmm. you know what i mean hey who are we going to use and we ended up settling on one agency who had like a really good uh, uh, they did a great job at like having a big comprehensive presentation, making it very feel official, doing all the interviews with customers, logging all the customer feedback, yeah. meeting with all the different teams and getting that feedback. Yeah. And I would like fly on the wall those meetings and make sure I was kind of calculating like, oh, I remember hearing this, just making sure I had my finger on the pulse of it, but just letting the process happen. The hard part was more when it came time to make decisions and be especially a lot of them with branding is a cre- they're more creative decisions yeah. um and some of them are not super creative they're just more like practical like hey are we going to use this word to describe ourselves are we going to alienate this word should we do that um and and when you have like eight to ten executives in that decision making process it can be fairly complicated well definitely like super complicated <laughs> yeah like, yeah i mean yeah trying to make a decision with Two people is complicated sometimes. It is. And and, it, and, and what's tough is, and, and what was a little tough is, um, like, in the case of, like, my father being the CEO, obviously he has the ability to make an executive decision, but he is, mm-hmm. was always very much the type of CEO who's, like, just let my team decide. Almost too much so. Like, we would, that's one thing I would argue with him on. Like, we were cool, and I'm mega thankful for everything, but, like, when, when he would, like, not make a call that was the call, do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, I'm like... Yeah. This is definitely the call, and you kind of just got to make it. But he'll be like, just let the team decide. I'm like, the team's not deciding. I'm t- this, this is drama. I'm telling <laughs> you. We're wasting weeks. Like, I'm not arguing with this guy who's a tech genius about this creative decision. Like, there's no <laughs> way. I know I'm right. In those cases, yeah. there's, there were times that I knew factually I was right. There were also times that I was like, and I was humbled. I was humbled the whole time. Like, I really mm. never walked in like, boss's son, I'm in charge. When I believed in something, though... I'd like be there. It's like, all right, if you want to argue, like we can argue about that. There were also times that I'm like, we're not arguing about that. We're arguing about who I am and what my name is. Yeah. And so that was, you know, obviously a little bit tough, but so like yeah. you had an agency come in to help you guys. Yeah. Out. Agency came was in. Yeah. Was that vendor kind of like a, you know, like vindicating what you like the way you wanted it to go as opposed to me, like some, the way the, br- other people wanted the brand to go like that help your case right so so what we did the first brand came in and got tons of data and information and like got in the direction of this was the main thing that we got out of that first agency the main thing was we as a brand were someone who presented what was available to the customer we'd be like here's the newest samsung here's the newest sony here's the newest products yeah but we weren't someone who's like did you imagine this can you think of this? Here's here's what's possible. So mm-hmm. we our main brand insight was let's move from what's available to what's possible, which was like everyone agreed on that, which was yeah. great. But that same agency had a very like, in my opinion, kind of poor creative team. And so the aesthetic stuff that they started delivering yeah. after the brand insights was like ugly. I'm like, dude, this looks like a freaking laundry <laughs> detergent company. I mean, there's <laughs> no fucking chance we're yeah, going with this logo. And I remember I got nervous because all of a sudden, like a bunch of people who have very bad creative taste were like, yeah, this is great. I'm like, no, it's fucking not. <laughs> this shit is trash. You know what I mean? Not in those words, yeah. but in my head. Yeah, course, and yeah. so I'm like, all right, how do I bring this emotion of I give a fuck a ton. I think I have good like design taste. Hell fucking no. But, like, how do I do this in, a, like, a civil way, obviously, and, like, get them to, you know. And so, anyway, I was just, like, I was, like, that, no way. <laughs> we can't, you know what I mean? I was, like, this was great. We used them. We did spend some good money on the rebranding. We've got all these good insights. I'm going to go shop for an agency to now build the result of the insights, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. The, the website creative. design, all that kind of stuff. And then um, we ended up getting an agency who could like deliver on that side and starting kind of the whole process again, except more in the creative realm. Mm. Um, so you could imagine once it became more of the creative expression, then 
even more complications kind of because the first part was sort of easy we're like oh this is just feedback we have this obvious like transition we're trying to make everybody agrees for the most part the only thing we didn't agree on was using them for creative yeah and then i kind of at least won that battle a little bit i was like all right good we can go move to somebody who can make something dope and they have a, a really nice portfolio and then that opens sort of the next can of worms of all right what are we building and and so when you rebrand you rebranded what did you guys rebrand to like what was the just same what name possible? yeah so um, we were originally HB Communications okay and we simplified it to HB okay even though we couldn't afford to buy the domain HB.com. <laughs> they probably wanted stupid <laughs> yeah. money for it and I'm like goddamn our damn email addresses were like Dan dot Baron at HB Communications dot com I'm like damn I wish we had HB dot com this is driving that, me crazy dot, dot net yeah yeah, yeah dot net <laughs> dot org dot org dot family org um <laughs> and uh and so yeah so it, it was definitely um it was interesting and was the so your primary customers. Yep. Was it just basically like that re recurring revenue from schools and, and like the bigger customers that you did maintenance Tons on? of recurring, like yeah. every year, same customers, yeah, for sure, yep. I mean, that's 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 where you want to be, man, right there. Yeah, yeah. It's um, it, But again, it was just like as a business, and it was funny because growing up, I there was not a single day in my life, I think I told you that last night, that I ever wanted to be the CEO of the company mm -hmm. as a kid because um, – it was so like corporate and and operational heavy and all the pain in the ass life mm -hmm. of like GCs and like contractors and if we don't get in on time then we're losing money and did the program respect the right amount of hours and is engineering accurate and oh you know oh we just came to the room and they they put the wrong blocking in the wall this isn't like yeah. I was just not attracted to like my brain was never like I love ops you right. know what I mean? Like, I don't have a COO brain. Yeah. Um, I was sort of almost tortured by the fact that I was excited as hell about the vision of what we could create. Um, and I wanted to work towards that. But the operational side and mm -hmm. the culture and other things, like, were definitely making that, you know, somewhat difficult mm -hmm. over time. Yeah. So talk, let's talk a little bit about that, like, your, the dynamic with your dad. Yeah. Because, like, you know... You're an SOB like me, a son of business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah for sure. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. I love I love saying that. Yeah, so, for sure. I, I've had a lot of SOBs. I think they've called I think they called me probably worse than that there. <laughs> <laughs> so like, you know, you're dealing yeah. with you know, because people look at it as like nepotism, maybe like you're of getting course. in yeah, of course. you know, without doing I, the I work. Probably, but, yeah. but you know, I mean yeah. that's the I mean it's family, you know, like yeah. that's hey, sorry, like yeah, you know, like, yeah. But if you're gonna work for it, yeah, you're gonna work for yeah. it. Yeah. So talk a little bit about that dynamic in the workplace because you had so many people involved. A lot yeah. of the people I've talked to, they're smaller yeah. companies. Yeah. You know how how is that like navigating with your coworkers versus your dad and like you know you said like he'd like to let the team decide and you're trying to be like no man let's just like let's just yeah. make this decision. Yeah, it was so again like I'm I'm incredibly thankful for the whole experience i i mean it was like the craziest education i could have, could have ever gotten on every level um with my dad it was he trusted me um big time you know what i mean mm -hmm. he definitely gave me obviously after we're talking like a 10 year span here it's so yeah. crazy to like try and cover it but yeah going from like more of a media design dude to leading a branding effort to then later establishing the marketing team and then later running and then being VP of it and, and all the different things that came after it. Um, he, he definitely trusted me. He gave me like the leeway to like go and, and lead it. I think the hardest part was, like I said before, um, he, he was always someone that just let everyone make the decisions, but also, um, if there was something that even he believed was like right for sure, he really didn't like upsetting the apple cart, so he wouldn't push certain things. Or maybe there were, you know, certain elements where I'm like, I'm like, we got poison in the company. Yeah. Like on my mom's side of the family, we were kind of the type that were like, if if I sense actual poison, and I'm sure it is, and my ego's not involved, like it's yeah. it's definitely poison. Out, hundred yeah. percent. I'm cutting it one thousand. Yeah. Like I'm not dealing with it for a fucking second. Like not because I don't want to give someone a chance. Like sometimes you have to deal with a talented jerk. Sure. Because you need that talented jerk for a period of time. But then once it starts to hit like X amount of years, you're like, 
come on, we're just letting oh, yeah. this, like it's we could have fixed a, this. A tumor just grows, right? Yeah, so, and, 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 it and it spreads heavily, and it spreads. heavy. I mean, I could just tell you guys a zillion stories of how many toxic things went on that were that were crazy. So there were those pieces where I was just like, man, like it's really tough for me to operate in an environment with a really significant amount of like, you know, I don't know the right word besides kind of like, you know, I won't say it, but so, so how did like, you how did you like navigate through I, some through some? For of me, things? I decided to put my head down and do what I could do, and I had to come to a reality that, with the given culture that we had, with the cash flow that we had, there was only so much that was gonna be re like a reality. Yeah. Within a period of time, like despite my dream of like, oh, we could become like the the billion dollar top dog, I just had to right. accept the fact that, like, this we can work on. All this, maybe later. You know what I mean? Yeah. As much as you're excited about it, maybe later. So I was just like, look, what am I good at? And I'm good at design and empathy and, like, understanding and communications and positioning. I, I understand that stuff, and it made sense. So I was like, hey, I'm just going to put my head down and, mm -hmm. and build out solid marketing and make sure that we deliver a beautiful website and make sure that we deliver a beautiful digital experience and, and really just focus on what I was good at. And I still was humble, and I'd still go and – ask for everybody's input even the people who are still assholes you know what i mean like that kind of stuff I was like hey i'm gonna take the hits i'm never gonna raise my voice as much as everyone else might you know what i mean if i get yeah. attacked i'm just not gonna give in as much as like my whole alpha alligator yeah. wants to just jump across a <laughs> table and like yo i yeah. you don't deal with that kind of disrespect yeah. in there i it was this massive lesson of like self-control and and keeping my head down and just trying to like do what the next best step was. And so like, why? Did, yeah. What do you think the reason like like putting it off was? Was it because of the hurdles of the dynamics of decision making at the company, or was putting it off like the stuff I was most excited about? You're saying, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Th there was there was so you said much there's like pockets of ownership, and, pockets you know. of ownership, tons of like. It was like House of Cards sometimes. <laughs> you were just like, the amount of crap going on at night at 8 p.m. You, you know, it's like, oh, I saw your face changed after you went to dinner with him. I know what's going on. I feel this. I'm like, you know what I mean? It was just all the time, and it, yeah. was, it was constant. It was some of the most stressful years of my life. Like, I spent... I would be like listening to Eminem at 7 a.m. on my way to an executive meeting just to like mentally prepare for the friggin' <laughs> not like the attacks and like the heaviness, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and even just kind of going back to like what your, your other question was with like dealing with my dad and that dynamic, um, I, I think the, the main takeaway was really, hey, it's awesome to have the leeway. We never argued. Mm -hmm. nah. Once in a while, I'd finally sure. get fed up and I'm like, come on, this is ridiculous. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but I, I just found that the, the best thing that you can do is like when you really hit, like you need to know which battles to walk away from and which ones to take Ooh, on. And is. when you have like such a large amount of battles, you cannot pick all of them because mm -hmm. you will lose. Um, and so it was really just about becoming a pro at what battles I wanted to fight mm -hmm. and, and knowing that I would only take on a battle that had to be won. Yeah. Meaning like sometimes you can take out, you're like, oh, you don't like the name that they wanted for their service? Like, whatever. We have 50 yeah. services. Let them have it right now, and yeah. we're going to go and win this battle. Yeah. That was, like, the thing I got most out of it, yeah, probably. That's, that's that's some alpha, speaking about the alpha alligator. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. I mean, it really is. Seriously. Do, picking yeah. your battles. Do stuff. you think that came through just practice over the years, or was it something yeah. that you learned from <laughs> watching other people? <laughs> yeah, just pain and practice. Just, <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. Well, and talking yeah. to your dad, right, like some guidance from... The thing with him is, like, we, we would be, like, we would go and make chop wood on a Saturday and come to a <laughs> total agreement on something, and then Monday he's not pushing it. I'm like... I'm like, I get that you don't want to push your son's <laughs> ideas, but you agree. I'm like, at some point, yeah. I know that you don't want to be like, oh, just because it was my son's idea, yeah. I want to push. I'm like, that's fine. And like, why don't you just give me 10 L's and like, let's take these two W's yeah. so that they don't think you're supporting everything. Like, I'm fine with that. You know what I mean? So, but yeah. Yeah. it sounds like your dad's personality overall is pretty anti-combative. Anti-combative. And, but at extremely the same time, positive. At the same time, it yeah. resulted in him yeah. not like, overseeing every decision that was made by you and gave you some creative freedom totally, totally, in yeah. being able to try things. Totally. Right? Yes, what what yes. impact do you think that had on your success as an SOB? That Because mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people who are business owners, like they have that alpha personality. Yeah. They have like, okay, we have control over everything. Yeah. Bulldozers, like giving, right? giving up, exactly. Like giving up that control yeah. to somebody with significantly less experience and allowing them yeah. to make decisions 
to a certain extent yeah. and maybe even right. fail because sure. of those decisions Absolutely. Yeah, and sure. learn from it for sure. is so critical. For sure. Like what? The biggest gift. That was the biggest gift. I yeah. got the, I got the at bat. Yeah. I was allowed to practice and try and experiment. Everyone knows what marketing you are experimenting. Yeah. So you don't just like deliver well, it's always a rebrand. Changing. Yeah, you don't deliver like a perfect 10 rebrand. Like, no <laughs> fucking chance. You're standing in there giving a speech in front of 400 people yeah. presenting it cuz like I put my money where like I was like, "Hey, I'm going to launch it and I'll give the speech." I what it's about like I'm gonna put my mouth out there I'm gonna be behind it yep. but like you know there's like this pocket who's super pissed about yep. something um so but yeah always will be yeah that was just so, so it was the biggest blessing because I was able to like you know over the years take L's and then get W's and even if you got W's you weren't getting credit for those W's they pissed they were pissed <laughs> you got the W you know what I mean so I had to act like it wasn't a W um and and just for the sake of culture just yeah. trying to like keep getting wins you can't like Ha ha one, you just gotta yeah. be like be consistent. You have to be yeah, you, and I guess they use that word stoic. Like I tried to embrace that. Mm -hmm. My issue was like, um, in the beginning and, and I created some of my own problems because mm. kind of the background I told you I'm like, we're making jackass videos like rebel. I was like very anti whatever culture, like hip hop. Like my brain sure. was like, I'm not walking to a fucking meeting with a suit on. Like there's no <laughs> chance I'm the boss's son who's gonna walk in like a dude in a suit. I'm wearing a hoodie in the executive room. I might have an yeah. earring, like I you know, and everyone knew who I was. So like I, I feel like I played the rebel card sometimes more than I should have early. Um, but maybe, but not terribly. Sure. Um, so I think I set myself up for a little bit of it because you're like, you're, you're young and you're, you're making mistakes. So, mm. yeah, you said something though, like, you know, you, you got your idea, but then you're in front of 400 people delivering this, you know, like yep. you're, you're on the forefront, you're putting your, your money where your mouth is. For you sure. Know? Yep. And a lot of people in probably in this big organization, yep. you know, they're just talking about it. Yes. You know, yes. Yeah. Like, well, this is the oh, idea, gosh. but they're not getting out there, man. They're not no. putting their money. No, their no. I mean, and again, it's all fair. Like, I think that's what you get. Your job yeah. is to lead people. I'm mm -hmm. 25. I'm 24. Whatever the ages were that I'm doing all these different things. Like, I don't, I don't know how to like lead people except to like literally be genuine. I learned that yeah. from my family. Mm -hmm. Be genuine. The truth wins always. And like don't be an asshole definitely don't act like a cocky like stuck up dude ever yeah. never use the family card like act humble as often as possible and one of my issues in life like going way back was i i was i remember like growing up being shy of the fact that i was lucky and blessed with like money and things mm -hmm. and so i was like over humbleized. <laughs> mm -hmm. i was trying to like say so humble that i was just losing that energy of confidence mm -hmm. and that like that will to just kind of project my thoughts because I, I didn't want to, like, trounce on people. You know why, what I mean? Why do you think that is? Because I feel like that's not always... I feel like more times than not, it's not the result, especially if somebody who comes from a successful family of business and you grow up with versus yeah. without, right? Yep. Yeah. There's a lot of different ways you can play that as parents yeah. to raise your children and try yeah. and figure out the path to humility. For sure. And them actually appreciating that we worked for this. For sure. And getting them to feel like they have an obligation to work for it and yes. they're not better than anybody else because of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what do you think led to you ending up there? Super youth, like being young and just like going through school like we all did and especially, you know, just I, I think my, because we had money, even though we were like in a town with money, most of my f closest friends didn't necessarily have money or they might have been from the city. And like, mm -hmm. I again, I was like a hip hop head. I was hanging out yeah. with everyone who wasn't like the typical mm -hmm. like rich kid from my town. Right. And so yeah, I was very you said shy. You said chopping wood though. What's that? You yeah. And even, that, yeah. Well, you know, yeah. But even, hard, right? yeah. It, <laughs> well, I grew up like my mom's side of the family. There's a lot of like farm in the woods. Mm -hmm. Like I, we knew what hard work was. Like we know how to sweep a floor, right? You know what I mean? I wasn't like sitting there. Like Dude, that's such an underrated statement. <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. People, don't, know, sweep people know they don't know how to sweep floors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, like mm, yeah. you're like, yo, if, if you were sweeping a floor like, like a bitch, doing, my grandpa man? was like, dude, this is what you do. Like get the job done. There's dirt and you're supposed to move it over here. See how that doesn't work? This works. You know what I mean? Dude, that's exactly yeah. why yeah. you were humble like that. So man. I, but the other like piece that. of the question was, um, even though we were in a town that did have a good amount of money, mm -hmm. we were definitely in a category where maybe we had even a little more than the average. We mm -hmm. had a, like a lot of land and people knew like my mom's right. side of the family and they knew the dad and there was like all this entrepreneurship. Um, and so I was still, even within my peer group who all had great lives, shy at the fact that we had a, a good amount and had mm -hmm. a lot. And I think um, like my mom at a super young age taught me empathy heavy. 
Like mm. putting myself in other people's shoes. She almost taught it so well that it became a major hindrance to my life because I was so empathetic to like the people I was around mm. that you know when you'd be in a room or at a party and you got like, you know everybody, but maybe they don't know each other. And you know this dude is going through some shit and he's yeah. going, and then this dude walks in like Mr. Cocky, obnoxious, talking about something crazy. And you know what's going on in his mind over here. Yeah. And he, <laughs> and you still like this person, you know who he is and you know his quirks. But my head would always be like, all right, how do I say the right thing and change the energy so this person doesn't feel yeah. bad? And then that, and then what it does is it spirals over time. And like, I'm at a party and I'm always the one talking to like the most degenerate person because I don't want them to feel yeah. like they're messed up. You know what I mean? Or we're outside of a bar. I'm talking to the homeless guy. I was just overextending myself over time, exhausting. even though it's massively mm. exhausting. So I took that on for a long period of my life. Mm. And it wasn't until probably like, seven years ago six years ago that i started to realize it and be like hey humility is great and all but the the company business and all of the like the wars i had to get into i was like all right there's only so fuck you know so much humility that we yeah. can do at a certain point you have to kind of like strengthen up a little bit and yeah. one little tiny story that was like a seed that led to all that on the empathy level my uh i remember being a kid and my mom caught me like torturing a bug like i was like just like <laughs> fucking with it and like popping its legs just off. I don't know stuff. what, yeah, just being a weirdo. <laughs> and she lit me up. She was just like, who, like, you think that thing doesn't have feelings? Like, how do you know? How do you know that the ant doesn't have feelings? How do you know how it perceives family or any? I just remember her putting this thought in my head. I'm like, fuck, I can't really debate it. I definitely don't know shit about the universe. I have no idea how we were created. Yeah. It's totally possible that that thing was just getting tortured by me. Um, and so that was like the earliest empathy seed where I was like, oh shit, like empathy is real. And then I kind of took it too far along with being shy about the fact that we had a lot. Yeah. Um, and it, it lasted a long time. And it was a, it was a tough battle actually to get mm -hmm. back to confidence and just like, I would like hunch my shoulders cause I just didn't want to be like, you know what I mean? Like oh, it, it kind of, seriously, it, it kind of made you timid a little bit. Yeah, totally. So, yeah, I mean, for you sure. don't want that. I mean, you gotta be, you gotta assert your, right. you gotta have, you gotta, right. You know, like you know what you th you believe, and you for gotta sure. at least give yourself. With a my chance. friends, I wasn't timid, yeah. but with the public, the I business, was over yeah. overly. Yeah, and then in the business early on, I was like, yeah, I'm just. It's gonna be plenty of time being humble. Mm -hmm. Um, and so anyway, that all kind of led, and and then it developed, and then the business pulled out of me. I was like, oh cool, that was also a teaching point. I'm yeah. like, you're gonna have to learn how to like project what you're actually thinking. Because I was confident in my thoughts. I was never, like, unconfident. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. With my friends, there was no timidness. We were all just yeah. crazy shitting on each other all the time. Like, you know, beating each other up in the woods. Like, just being crazy. But, like, in public with people I didn't know, I was, like, very, like, yeah, humble, almost shy. Yeah, the, yeah. the bug thing, that's funny. Because one thing, I, like, when I, if I'm in, like, the, my car and, like, a fly comes in, man. Yeah. Like, my mind always goes to, like, you know, what if I was reincarnated? as that bug but yeah, like dude. i'm still alive and yeah. i smack that bug i kill myself i know it's like it's the weirdest <laughs> thing i'm with you it's like that man i know so then i like let I the know. bug go i'm like yeah go go ahead i man. still save like, bugs <laughs> all the time in my I'm house like, my yeah. wife is like she's like running around this fly swatter and now she's kind of pissed because her consciousness is like evolving and she's like all right save this thing and i'm like i'll take the spider out like i still don't like killing bugs <laughs> Well, yeah, it depends, you know, if there's like a Unless wolf. it's a mosquito or a tick, yeah. you're done. Yeah. Well, then you're Mosquitoes eating. and ticks are the things that kill you in Connecticut. <laughs> That's the most dangerous shit in Connecticut, so those will kill, but yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So let's talk about the, the paintball on a little bit, man. How'd you yeah. get into that? Because I love We grew up stuff. in the woods, um, and, and there was like some paintball places, and mm -hmm. I was like, we got mad woods. So we were just scavenging the woods for random stuff abandoned refrigerators and, yep. and taking wood and building shit in trees and Forks i was always and like yeah, i was always like obsessed with the military and mm. and yep. warfare and all that so it was like oh this is a nice safe version of it for <laughs> for connecticut you know what i mean yeah so sure. we just got into it and just used to play in the woods all the time and it was just it was just a thing you know dude it's super and airsoft it's super fun mm. like, like super fun you know shoot your friends with paintballs yeah airsoft <laughs> didn't work out because it didn't hurt bad enough we just ended yeah. up being like all right we're not gonna play way. unless you have a tank top on if you have a tank top <laughs> on we'll play but i'm not playing with a long sleeve shirt because we ended up just like standing in the open grass and being like yeah. all right it hit you i don't know man some Wait. of those co2 ones will mess you up though. yeah there's definitely some strong ones but whatever collection it didn't hurt as much as paintballs yeah you always said yeah. that well i don't know if you did but i had that one friend that was a real ass 
and like put the paintballs in the freezer. Oh, got you. I never like, did that. Oh my gosh. And then like shoot you with them. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And then yeah, like yeah. breaks your breaks your skin. <laughs> yeah, dude. And you're like, dude, that's rugged. <laughs> yeah, that's like shooting marbles, yeah, dude. That's dude, not what right. The hell is wrong that's with not you? right. I was like, I was the asshole friend though that once in a while would be like, because again mixed with jackass times um we'd be playing and i'd be like all right time out and my boy would get up my bah, bah, bah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are yeah. i mean those make you tough though stuff like that yeah it, yeah it was yeah, fun, fun. It, i kind of had that farmer life a little bit you know what mm-hmm. i mean it was yeah. like like i still had the luxury side but we had that you weren't afraid to woods. play in the dirt oh god no no so the other side of the family is that where the like the farmer yeah kind of stuff yeah my in? mom's side i grew up like i grew up on a street where my next door neighbor was my aunt and uncle and then their two daughters, who are both my same age, so we went to high school together. Then the next house down was my grandfather's house, mm-hmm. and we all kind of like bought land together behind us near the state forest. So we just grew up in a lot of woods. A mile in the other direction was like my aunt and my cousins. Oh, mile awesome. in the other direction was aunt and cousins. <laughs> um, so yeah, that side of the family was like the most close family sense I grew up with. My dad's side of the family we weren't as connected from a family standpoint. Gotcha. So yep. growing up with your cousins was right down the road. Like I, I did that too. Yeah, and I, and it's crazy because you grew up like, with everybody right down the road, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. It's like across yeah. the street. Yeah, for sure. But like you know, it was it was fun because like it was like I had two more brothers. And, yeah, you know, the, we ride four wheelers together and stuff like that. And yeah, like I mean, so that's it's just like there was always someone to do stuff. Oh with. yeah, that was my favorite. Yeah. So yeah, that side of the family was all very close to me. Um, and then years later uh my grandfather decided so he was like a contractor building like thousands of houses in connecticut and okay he was like a hardcore entrepreneur he started like picking tobacco oh, really? then he was like installing pools and then he started a nightclub and then started a bank and then wow. built houses so he like worked up heavy and he was probably my main entrepreneur inspiration in my life yeah. and mm-hmm. the guy that i spent the most time with and he was always like a major helper always helping people tons of love oh, like helping thousands of people is like his biggest hobby mm. um so that side of the family was probably the most inspiring from like who i want to be yeah. and definitely the attitude of like no bullshit and i'm not playing games and yeah. you're real or you're not and if you're an asshole you're out <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> yeah so awesome. that's that side of the family definitely helped develop most of, of the character my dad's side of the family, we didn't see as much. That side of the family was Jewish, so we would see them at, like, Hanukkah and, um, like, Christmas with the other side of the family. Yeah. I didn't have, like, a religion either way. No one really practiced anything, but I had that kind of all around me, so. Well, like, the entrepreneur obviously rubbed off on you a lot. Yeah. And in your early days when you're going through college, you were talking about how you've tried all of these things. It's like yeah. we wanted to build this website and then start this company yeah. and then do this thing. And yeah. you've got all these different hobbies. And that could yeah. be the danger of entrepreneurship, right? Yeah, it's yeah, like for sure. You've got all of these different things. Yeah. But, you know, if you go and chase 10 bones, you'll never get any of them. Yep. So how did you end up getting to the point from like I've got all of these ideas and I want to do all of these things because I know I'd be good at any one yeah, of them but yeah, yeah. like yeah. settling on okay I'm gonna join the family business because yep. I think I can actually make a real impact here yep and it just it makes sense with what I want to do with my life yeah it um it, it I was out of college and I, I think there was just like the obvious framework of be responsible mm. so I was like all right if I'm going to go get a job, like, I've worked other jobs for people. I didn't just have, like, full frame. Like, I worked, like, mm-hmm. bartending, making pizza at the local soccer sure. plays, doing that kind of stuff. Um, but the I, – I think probably the just the process of being like, yeah, the family needs it. Also, I need a job. Mm-hmm. This feels right right now. Yeah. And, yeah, the beauty is, like, I can still work on my other stuff. Like, when I got into that business, I was still – in the hip-hop thing mm. for years into it so it was just the second part of my life and i always needed multiple outlets i just can't yeah. only do one thing for sure and that's definitely how i'll be for the rest of my life sure. but then i did learn the lessons of like what are my limits of spreading thin yes and mm-hmm. i found where those boundaries were and i and and now i know where those boundaries are is, and, is that like because you say yes a lot 
Uh, or like you commit to. Like I don't say yes or... to anybody else. I come up with an idea and I say, say yes, yes to yourself. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, right. I mean, yeah. you have to figure out yeah. like, okay, what are my priorities right now that are gonna have the biggest ROI with my time? Because it's like you, like I run into saying yes too much into the like to myself of the things I want to do. Yeah, for sure. It's like I want to do this and I want to add this in and like I know all of the right mm-hmm. things to do for sure for the vision that I have for yeah, my yeah, life. Like, yeah, you but see it. At the end of the day, like I can't do all of it right. on my own for sure. So I either have to out. Outsource certain aspects of it, yeah, yeah, or just postpone the things that aren't as top priority, right, right. Because otherwise, you're spread too thin, and then you end up sucking at all of them Definitely. because you can't give them enough attention. Definitely, and you end up stressed yeah. at them. They're not like yeah, fun and then anymore. They're not, exactly, the things yeah, that were yeah. fun. Yeah, ones you're like, I don't want to do this. Like, I feel like it's failing, or like yeah, whatever. You drop it all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, my thing is, I was always like very detached. I, what I was attached to is that I had big dreams for my life and my yeah. big picture stuff. I was attached to like never giving up on big picture success, Mm -hmm. but on little things, I was able to like detach and be like, I feel zero shame in not doing this right now. Like it's over. I definitely know it's the end and I have no problem with it. And I feel zero bit of failure. Yeah. And that was, I think the beauty of the twenties, I guess I can speak for myself and just being like, I was blessed enough to be in a situation where I could experiment. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are not even close to blessed enough to be able to experiment, even though like, of course, there's nuance to that. Yeah, sure. There's yeah. definitely ways. Like, if someone was in a horrible situation, I'd be sitting there being like, try this, try that. I'm not yeah. saying there's no option, but I was mm-hmm. so lucky that I could try everything. Right. You know what I mean? Um, and so I think the cool thing about the 20s and maybe even the spot that you're at, you're like, yeah, yeah there's a lot going on. But I, my, uh, my, my, my grandpa used to just be like, you need to know when to mm-hmm. get out. Like... You know what I mean? When it's over, it's over. If you yeah. get that gut feeling, just be done with it. That's you know the thing I mean? a lot of business owners have trouble with is like, yeah. when do I call it quits? When do I take it? Because they the think it's a big failure it. at the end. Yeah. Like, when do I take my L? It's like, it's not an L. It's an L if you stay there and it doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> and like, listen, yeah. there's going to like, yeah, it might be an L on fail or on a hey, paper. Jake. But there's a lot that you can learn from it yeah. and take, take to when you go for the next round because you're not just going to stop there, this most likely. Right. For sure. And you're going to get to a point where, okay, now I can take these lessons and that apply that to this next venture, yeah. which then could be the reasons that's successful. Yeah. And it might not have been yeah. had you not. For sure. That's the, that. like, that's the magic between everything. Like If you're willing to actually trust intuition that's one thing Mm -hmm. when i first discovered gary i was like oh it's kind of dope to see somebody who's like this level of an entrepreneur who's talking about intuition i I was like because my mom that was the other thing besides empathy it was very much intuition Mm -hmm. and i grew up in a house where like our walls were covered with every book about ancient egypt pyramids like any (laughs) other alternative thing that could ever exist so my open-mindedness to like the universe was open super young Good. And so I just built a belief, not in like any specific God or thing, but it, a, a belief in like there's an energy. Yeah. And if you follow your gut and you follow your instincts and like when you see synchronicities or special moments like mm. this building being 555. Dude, yeah. us, oh, my gosh. <laughs> us meeting last night. Mm-hmm. I grew up five was my favorite number since I was a kid. You look at all my basketball photos since I was like He's six. Got proof. I was five. Yeah, I got proof. <laughs> Gary He's can't own receipts. five. Yeah. Gary's <laughs> older than me. So he may he get something. But like I was five yeah. since I since forever. Um, and so when I meet you randomly last night and then there's a family business and then you're like Dude, a podcast crazy, in the morning man. before your flight. And then it's five, five, five. Like. I take mm-hmm. all those as signs that I'm going in the right direction. Yeah. But my entire life, I kept my eyes peeled for what felt right. And over time, I also learned the lessons of when not to force things. Because I was mm-hmm. someone who would create big expectations for myself and then be let down. Like, oh, I'm so excited to go to this event and all these people and this girl's going to be there when you're a kid yeah. or whatever. And then it's not <laughs> it's not what you imagined. And then you start, like, trying to force it to be what you wanted it to be. Right. And Over time, after like having all those millions of micro failures of expectation, you learn that everything in life can go smooth if like you set the intention. Sure, you beat through like the wars, but are you really like looking for the signs? Yeah. And I followed those forever and it helped me major. Almost every time you can reflect on it and see why it happened the way that it did and it led to this other thing that would not have been the case for sure had it worked out maybe in the way that you would set from an expectation standpoint. Yep. But like following your gut intuition is something that's so not talked about enough. Yeah. And I wonder how you can train it too. I wonder how people can learn it who didn't grow up with it. I I think it just kind of like you you have to build a trust in yourself, right? And like understand that 
you are the only person that will always have your best intentions in mind. Yeah, yeah. With no compromise. Yeah. It should be that way. For sure. Right? Like, yep. it, everybody has an agenda of some sort and yep. will always, more times than not, prioritize their own personal agenda over, like, the your, whatever you need. Mm -hmm. Right? And so, in the spirit of taking care of yourself, like, you just have to trust that the things that you're doing always have good intention to yeah. better your life or mm -hmm. accomplish whatever you're trying to accomplish. Right, right. And just like, hey, I've just got this gut feeling about this. Yeah. Not going and needing validation from all these external For sources. Sure, yeah. and like, what should I do? What should I do? What should right. I do? Because yep. the last thing you want to do is fall on somebody else's sword. Definitely. Yeah. That's For the sure. worst thing. Because then it's yeah. so easy to go and, oh, it's their fault. Like yeah. they told me oh, to yeah, do yeah. this. Sure. Versus taking accountability yeah. and yeah, ownership. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it doesn't mean yeah. following your intuition will always work out no. in the way that you think it should. No. But at least you can say, right. like, that was my call. Yeah. That was on me. Yeah. And I'm going to own it, learn from it, yeah. and then continue to fine-tune my intuition. For sure. And mm -hmm. people sometimes think of intuition only on the magic positive side. Mm -hmm. Like, ooh, I saw a yellow bird, and I was just, like, yeah. talking about it. <laughs> but you also need to use it just as much on when something's not going in the right direction. Yeah. And as much as you just felt like, man, I just met this person. This has to be the sign. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you're just feeling change. all these other signs of negativity. You need to also be able to just whip off that real well, fast. Because yeah. every bit of information, you should be able to pivot. Yeah, right? for You're sure. gaining more information over time, and that's okay that you're intuition based off the information you had said this right but now it's saying something else you need to listen to right right and that's the same thing going back to the business side yeah. it's like my intuition said i need to start this for sure and i think i need to start this because i'm going to sell it for 100 million dollars right but then three years go by i haven't made a dollar yeah and yeah. like i need to take it behind the barn and shoot it yeah, yeah. okay my intuition's telling me that I'm yeah. emotionally attached because I yeah. thought it was going to be this and now it's this. Right. But really the reason that I needed to start it was because of all the things that I learned in the process. Yep. And then maybe the next thing ends yep. up leading me to yep. what yeah. I think my bigger vision For is. Sure. I, I think you, you, you said like, how do you develop or like, how do you start your intuition or like, you know, listen to it. And mm -hmm. one thing that like, just for me personally was that helped building confidence and doing what I think is right is just not lying to yourself in the fact that and mm. where when you do what you say you're going to do to yourself and you mm -hmm. do it, you know, you build that confidence within yourself that you know you're not full of shit, basically. Right, yeah. for sure. And so then once you know that you're not full of shit, mm -hmm. then you know, like, if somebody else is challenging you and you believe in this, yeah. that, like, you know you're right. Yeah. Or at least, like, you know, you th you're... you're conviction your conviction there. on the direction is like, there and once you, you might not have point, every little perfect fact yeah. but you're like i'm convicted that this direction is still yes, like the direction yeah, for like, sure but it comes down to the smallest things like if i say i'm gonna i'm gonna things. get up at this time and you set your alarm mm -hmm. and because you're gonna go to the gym before you start your day and then you wake up and you end up snoozing your alarm mm -hmm. like you're starting your day with an l <laughs> yeah and yeah. like it's it's so hard to come back from that mm. versus Anytime anyone gets up, when they say they're going to get up, they do the things in the morning, whatever that is that they say they're going to do. Mm -hmm. Like, by the time you get into the office or whatever you're doing for work, you're in a place of, like, a powerful state. Yeah. And those days are always so much better and you're so much more equipped to take on all mm -hmm. the challenges that are going to come. Yep. Versus starting with an L and then immediately, like, you get that email because you check your phone and it's like, you start your day with another shit show yeah, yeah. and now you're just in this state of like a lull all day long right. and all you want to do is like restart. For sure. And it's yep. because you're not building that, continuously building that confidence in yourself and if mm -hmm. you keep doing that, yeah. you almost build a habit of, of lying course. to yourself. Of course, yeah. Mm -hmm. of and course. It's, it's so hard yeah, yeah. to get out of it. Definitely, it really, yeah. really is. I've yeah. been in that place so many times. Yeah. But if you can just force yourself yeah. to get out of it, be determined to get out of that state and yep. just focus on i will not lie to myself yeah, yeah, yeah it builds such a different level of confidence yep in every decision you make yeah they forward. say know know thyself right and that's mm -hmm. a, a big one yeah and it takes and time people you know they want to get dramatic and think these big ideas and like broad huge things like big accomplishments but the best thing to do is the small things if you can do the small things right, you build that momentum. Mm -hmm. And, like, I don't know, man. The, there's a real force in the universe when it comes to momentum. Yeah, like, once everything. you start Definitely. moving, yeah. like, it's, like, inertia. 
like Newton's laws, gravity, whatever it is, That's man. Good. Like gravity's like <laughs> consistent, dude. It, it, it keeps working. <laughs> like there's yeah, right. Hopefully, yeah. like there's there's some real stuff to it because as soon as you start rolling and mm-hmm. you see like this, and then like that conviction gets stronger, and then your intuition is proven, and then man, it's just there's like something in it. It's like a dude. like a feeling, it, mm-hmm. and, and it just keeps going. And yep. the universe just feeds it, fuel, fuels the fire. Like in sales, we talk about the luckiest people are the ones that do the right things consistently over long periods of time. Yeah, it's like they're working hard, and then all of a sudden things start just falling into their lap. Mm-hmm. And the people who don't want to do the work are right. like all jealous. Why do they get that? How did that? Of course, that happened to yeah, them. Yeah, they're yeah, just yeah. lucky. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's not luck. They're yeah. creating their own luck by yeah. doing the right things. Yeah. And and the world is rewarding. And they don't know how much hell that person had been through. Well, exactly. You know, but it's yeah. like they're just consistently putting themselves in situations to get yep. lucky. Yeah, for sure. That's it. But you have to do it for yeah. long What's the co- The common quote the is right like, the, oh, it's funny because the harder I work, the luckier I got or whatever. Exactly. The harder yeah. I work, yeah. the luckier I get. Yeah, and that's yeah, exactly sure. it. And yeah. it's purely because of momentum. Yeah. And yeah. building trust in yourself, doing the right things. Yeah. And the world takes care of the rest. I think, I think so much of what people struggle with today is like that process of being real with themselves and kind of fighting through their demons and trying to, to, cause most of us have a significant amount of programming that we're trying to unprogram just from yeah. the way we grew up. We grew up in America. We grew sure. up with a hundred channels. Like you picked your channel. I'm this guy. I'm that guy. Like, yeah. and there's, there's just a lot of stuff that, that people need to beat through. And I think, I think we end up sort of like, I don't know. I think we, we're hard on ourselves. You know what I mean? Kind of mean to ourselves. And in the process of people trying to get better, um, with which all of us have things that we're probably mad at ourselves, like, man, what is this like thing I have? Like, I hate that about myself or <laughs> yeah. whatever it is. I think like there's a lot of magic to people having grace with themselves and being like, dude, I, like I got a list of shit I need to fix. Like I remember the amount of stuff I had in my 20s that I was just like, oh, because the more that you listen to podcasts or the more that you open yourself spiritually, the more you like realize that, you know, you got all this crap. Like when I was younger, I was like going to a party. Like I wanted to be like serious in the corner. Like, <laughs> like don't fuck with me. I'm not like even trying to talk. To, I don't want friends. You know what I mean? Like I remember I'm like, what are you doing? Like what? that's so not an enjoyable way to live. Like I want to yeah. be like nice and friendly and whatever. Mm-hmm. And, or like, oh, if I'm at an event, like a lot of my friends are like African and like everyone's dancing and fun. And I'm like not loose. I'm like, oh, why, why, won't, why don't I want to dance? Like whatever. Mm-hmm. It was like years before I would like get myself to be like, let it go. Just yeah. fucking have fun. And I think it's this process of being so honest with yourself about what the issues are. But the more honest you become with yourself, the more scary it gets because you realize you got more and more issues. And then that's when you need to be delicate and be like, oh, it's fine. Like these three things are gonna take some years. Mm-hmm. And like, I'll do a little better next month and maybe it flares up again in a month, but it's this idea of like, slow down. The beauty is you're taking the time to recognize your issues. And the other beauty is you got plenty of time to fix them. Yeah. So just like pick one at a time and go easy on yourself. It's that balance of like, how do you push yourself to be your best you? But not in a way that it's manic and neurotic and you're like yeah. freaking out because you can't believe how fucked up you Give are. Give yourself some grace. We all got that, I think that's like one of the biggest things ever is giving yourself the grace to be like, yeah, it's going to take some time. And yeah, a lot of people don't really want to look in the deep mirror. And I still surprise myself. Sometimes yeah. I'm like, I'll like give myself credit for something. And then some days I'll be like, ooh. Like you're lying to yourself a little <laughs> bit. Like you, yeah. you kind of think you got over that hump, but you didn't totally. Um, so I just think there's so much power in that, you know? Oh yeah. I mean, only, you know, what you did and didn't do right. Yeah. You know? Like, you know, you really do. Yeah. Like, I don't know. There's like an easy example is like when I'm running a, whatever I'm running, like the distance or whatever it is, like I always try to run past the finish line, you know, like yeah, yeah. Full blast go, through. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. Right. And like, dude, yeah. I remember one time I was, I had a, like a rucksack on and I was doing like getting ready for mm-hmm. this. Uh, event I was doing and I was like I'm gonna go all the way past this concrete pad yeah. like and it was snowing outside it was like a crazy like this yeah. I was like a crazy man outside with yeah, this yeah. rucksack on. yeah and I, I stopped like just short of it and I was like alright yeah I'm done but then I knew I was like you, like, you didn't go all the way man yeah, yeah, so yeah. then I just like like well I gotta like punish myself now so right. then I like started army crawling in the snow like back and <laughs> forth <laughs> and just, that stuff is the best like, the physical stuff really like can yeah. beat you up and, and, and I'm like and why did I go all the way it shit. was right there you know but it can also help continue to like create and solidify your trust in yourself when you do things like that right like yeah. he he punished himself and it 
helps reinforce the importance of not lying to yourself and doing what you say you're going to do. Yeah. And like going to the gym and running yeah, yeah. to into situations like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. you get to challenge yourself, right? Yeah. And it's like, yeah. I'm going to do this many reps, work out for this much time, whatever yeah. the case is. Definitely. And then you'll catch yourself stopping early. Like, I'm going to do, you did do enough 10 work. reps, and I'm, yeah. like, dying at 8, and I'm, like, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm just going to stop. Yeah. Like, no, I said I was going to do yeah, 10. Yeah. And then now if you got to do 11. Can't, yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. i got to do 11. Yeah. And if I physically yeah. can't do this, fine, I'll lower the weight, but I'm not making any excuses to not get that many reps in. Yeah. yeah. Right? Because That's those, the, and those the, are the, the most fitness stuff ones. is, like, the hu- biggest yes. stuff in my life for mental health. That's my fuel. And I consider it a weakness for myself. Like, if I don't get that out of my system... That self torture, those goals, that like hard ass thing that you've been trying to accomplish in it's, the gym for four it years, reflecting or reflecting like, in other aspects of your life. Yeah, and also more so, literally, if I don't do it like every week, I just find myself like to be a little bit more like irritable, mm-hmm, and that's yeah. when I'm like, oh, I probably have to practice gratitude more because you yeah. know what I mean. But um, yeah, that's always been a big thing. Similar to you, yeah. I got that mm. that plate vest at home that yeah, right. I come up with creative <laughs> ideas to like torture myself. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah, people think you're crazy. I like that though. Like when people, what, that guy, what the hell is he doing? Yeah, man? for sure. I mean, yeah, we <laughs> like, get fueled by it. You yeah, know, exactly. our, like that little healthy part of your ego is like, yeah, like I want to like I, when I'm I was doing the things that most won't. <laughs> yeah, when I was young, I think one thing that tortured me. I'm lying. Not not when I was young. Till today, one <laughs> one uh, one thing that tortured me forever was like I was always enamored by like special forces and buds and SEAL training mm-hmm. and, I, and that whole world, and yeah. I was always like tortured by the fact that I didn't know if I would be capable of any of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and and so I always just tried to make up for it in my personal life to some degree. You know so what I mean? Just do well, they got to great marketing. If you can do it. They got great marketing. Great yeah, yeah, marketing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at David Goggins. Well, yeah, but like think out of them, all the movies. I mean, dude, it's like it's it's yeah. some. Real well, most of those guys, like I'm, I'm actually I know Jocko Willing pretty well, and and all those guys, and like oh. most of them admit they're like they're like. I, I watched some cool shit, and yeah, I wanted to be a badass. Up. Exactly, man. <laughs> and and for us, we're like, yeah, we're running around the woods playing with guns our whole life, yeah. and 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 then like you know, a couple of bad events happen in the world, and you know there's evil, and you're like, someone's mm-hmm. got to take out that evil, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. but anyway, that doesn't matter. It's just mostly about, um, you know, that stuff always tortured me a little bit. So I try to make up for it in my little civilian world. <laughs> <laughs> so so what are you into? Let's talk about like what you're into now. Like yeah. you sold the company a year ago. Yep. I mean. Was that kind of like, so with like the, you know, the work environment being a little hard to, di- like that dynamic, was that a kind of a plan to sell it? Or was that just kind of, you know, like an offer came in and then your dad and the partners, you know, evaluated it and decided to sell or? Yeah, it was um like we had just went through COVID um, and it was, you know, it was, it was a super tough time because, like, everyone's physical locations are shutting down. Yeah. We sell to physical locations. Mm. We had to do, obviously, layoffs and, you know, restructuring and all that yeah. pain um, and coming out of the backside of it and just, like, seeing how, like, the world was dealing with it and the amount of instability that we saw and, like, all, like, the nonsense were, like... And, and again, we were doing, like, $100 million in revenue, but it wasn't, like, crazy profit margins. So yeah. it was, like, you're still relying on the bank for cash flow. They're still up your yeah. back. Mm-hmm. You have big companies who are constantly consolidating. Um, yeah. And all in all, it just was, like, the right decision. Like, we got an offer. We got approached mm-hmm. by one of the biggest companies in the industry, and we're like, yeah, I mean, I don't personally want to run this company my whole life. I don't have a passion for running such an operational intensive business right. or being, like, a manager-style CEO I'm way better at other things. I'd rather just go totally focus on me. And this is me personally. As a as a business, as a family, it was the right decision yeah. financially. Yeah. As a person for me, it was the perfect timing to be like, oh, cool. I have this like backlog of stuff that I'm insanely excited about. And I want to go capitalize on what I'm really good at and just release myself from this like whole crazy learning environment that I just came yeah. out of. Like I would yeah. never want to be in that environment again. I don't mind the amount of employees. I don't mind any of it, but the culture of it was absolutely yeah. just a learning environment. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Um, so yeah. So I was I was uh, I was really excited to just kind of move to now, and I've been working on a project, which hopefully I'll be able to share it in the next like five months. Um, I've been working on a project for quite a few years. Um, it's okay. an app, it's an app that I'm building. So my focus is getting that going, and then I had one back burner passion project, which is a clothing company 
called Valor Gear Co. If like you go on Instagram, follow Valor, Valor Gear Co. That's more like my 10, 15 year North Face RVCA Oakley style brand that I okay. wanted to build for myself. Cause I got tired of repping like Adidas and all these brands. I'm like, <laughs> I don't identify with them anymore. When I was young, I'm like, Oakley, it's badass. I yeah, feel like right? 007, <laughs> you know what I mean? North Face, I'm like a cool h- hiker dude outside. Like, again, there's all these personalities that are attached to brands and I wanted to build something that was um, more built around something I believed in and with a logo that I'd actually want to rock on all my gear. Right. Yeah. Um, so, so that's like a more of a long-term thing that today is just a hobby and here and there, I'll just like sh- make another 30 shirts or another 50 hats and sell them to people I know. Um, but my main focus is building, uh, this app and, um, and the timing was cool. I, we sold the company, I had a baby and oh, I just had this time man. to just be a dad. You know what oh, I mean? That's right. We talked yeah, for six yeah, months. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that was chilling. like, yeah, unbelievable. Um, six months to like be a dad and focus on my business. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which is easy for me at home because I'm like building yeah. an app. So put it. the baby to bed. Cool. I got my hours to just be in there building, designing, and making everything. So it's been cool. So you're doing, you're, you're designing the UI. Yeah, I design that. everything you touch and see and feel. And then my partner codes it. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So it was cool. What was the inspiration for that? Just like something you you, you uh, seen a need for? Huge gap in the market. Yeah, I, gotcha. I I'm not I'm like only interested in building stuff that I am the customer for. Okay. So it keeps my ego as an entrepreneur out of it because yep. I'm like the whole time I'm building I'm not like ooh my good designer, is this yeah. nice? Are You're people like, gonna like this? this? I'm like this sucks. This sucks. Oh, I I would love that. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I want. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's way better when you're the customer to For whatever sure. you're I mean, building. That's, yeah. Huh. That's where you can identify a need. Yeah. And and not just right. like, try to deliver something to the marketplace that doesn't yeah. need right. to exactly. be delivered. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it's a massive gap. I think it's something that everyone here will use. You guys will use. I think everyone will be like, it's very helpful. It's a total gap in the market. And I just think it needs to exist. So I figured I'd build it. <laughs> and I waited a couple years. I first had the yeah. idea. I won't even be honest with how many years ago I had the idea. Um, and I was just kind of like, oh, you know, my competitors, like, someone's going to build this. Like, how are they sure. not? It's, like, freaking obvious. And then, oh, no one's even close. Oh, here, yeah. Another year, no one's even close. All right, fuck it. I'm building this thing. I need yeah. it. <laughs> the right That's timing. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, for I need you. it. Yeah, for sure. So, but, uh, but yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah, dude. Yep. And I got my my buddies, like, dude, we have to... Oh, shit. Yeah. I got to get out of the room in like two minutes. Oh, you're good, man. Yeah. I appreciate you coming on, Dan. Yeah. Yeah. What, thanks for it. What, what can people find you on? Like on Instagram? Uh, Instagram and Twitter at Daniel J. Barron, B A R R O N. Awesome. Yeah. So, but thank you. I appreciate it. It was awesome. And hopefully we can do it again. Yeah. We'll do it again. Yeah. Maybe, we can maybe talk uh, something else. <laughs> yeah. Fun. Maybe uh, next year here, we'll do it again, even. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, so, Dan. Appreciate it. He's like, dude, my car can be charged 50% of the cost. I'm like, bag outside and wait for me in the hallway. Yeah, definitely.